big cuts, extreme cuts, draconian cuts. That's been the response to the House Republicans' budget plans. Many people say they go too far, and we'll hear that argument later on this program. But amidst all these big cuts, there's still one area of the budget where the Republicans cut almost nothing. They keep President Obama's defense spending plan. Apparently, even the budget cutters don't think the military can be cut. But it can, says the Cato Institute, which has proposed more than a trillion dollars in cuts over 10 years. Ben Friedman helped prepare that report. So, trillion dollars, that sounds like it would make us vulnerable. Well, you got to cut commitments. So if, if you made all those cuts, if you cut a trillion dollars without cutting what we're doing in the world, that would cause problems. It would overburden the force. Uh, but you can do it if you say we're going we're gonna to have fewer commitments in the world. We're going to defend fewer rich countries and bring a lot of our troops home. Well, commitments. The commitments we hear about are Libya, Afghanistan, and Iraq. But it's true. We have troops in many other places. Certainly we ought to have fewer wars, but we got troops defending Europe from nothing uh, that have been there since the Cold War. We have a lot of troops in Asia and Japan and South Korea defending rich countries that could defend themselves. And, and just how many amazed me that we have 50,000 troops in Iraq, but 54,000 in Germany. I thought that war was over. 34,000 in Japan, 28,000 in South Korea. But people would argue we have to protect them against the North Koreans. They got uh, 30 or 40 times the GDP of North Korea. It's hard to say because it's hard to divide by zero. I think the South Koreans can defend themselves. It's not 1955 anymore. Congressman Ryan's plan claims $178 billion in savings and supported by Secretary Gates. Sounds like a lot. I, I would call those phony cuts, but that, that would be too kind. They're borrowed phony cuts. The, the Secretary Gates and the President are not actually cutting defense spending. They're cutting the rate of defense spending growth. So we're still going to have a bigger defense budget under Ryan's plan or uh, Gates's plan in the next 10 years than we had in the last 10 years. And that was the biggest defense budget, more than we spent on defense in any decade since World War II. The Heritage Foundation says we should spend more on defense. And if we don't, the threats to us and our allies will grow. The Heritage Foundation uh, is always going to come up with threats to justify the defense budget. They love defense spending, love it for its own reasons, uh, and when all the threats we have now disappear, they'll invent new ones. So I, I wouldn't listen to them on this stuff. 29 Republicans have sent this letter to, to Congressman Boehner saying, we need more spending to fight a spectrum of threats. I bet 28 of them have a defense base or production facility in their district. So I think that's pork barrel politics. This is just cynical. Give us, give more money to the district. Former Senator Jim Talent, we have to spend on defense to balance the China threat. Uh, we spend more than four times what China spends on its defense budget. They have zero carrier battle groups. We have 11. So I think we're well out in front of the Chinese, and that will be the case for quite a long time. But who will keep the world safe if not the United States. Ambassador John Bolton told us we're underspending on defense. We have to modernize or we'll be weakened. It's not our job to uh, keep everybody in the world safe. It's the job of the governments uh, that those people elect or that they have. Uh, so the world will keep itself safe. The English will keep the English safe and the people in Asia will keep uh, their own areas safe. But in the Constitution, I'd like to have one around. I'm criticize all the things government is doing, but one of the things government is supposed to do is protect, keep us safe, protect us from foreign enemies. Fight them over there so we don't have to fight them over here, was the Bush argument. If you look in, the, in there, in the Constitution, it says provide for the common defense. It doesn't say provide wastefully for the common defense. And the common defense is our defense, the uh, American defense, not the defense of the world, not the defense of democracy everywhere. So the Constitution is great, but it doesn't tell you how much you ought to spend on defense. The Cato plan would just say get out of Afghanistan. Well, we get out uh, over a couple years, uh, but yeah, we think those sorts of wars that are fought to, uh, in the vain attempt to make governments where there aren't any are just a bad idea. Now, Al-Qaeda will go back out. in and rebuild and come and kill us. I don't believe that. I think that we have the military technology to bomb any camps that would show up in Afghanistan. We didn't have that technology in the 1990s. And I think uh, on top of that, the Taliban might have learned a few lessons about uh, whether or not it's a great idea to let those guys back in. All right. Well, thank you very much, Ben Friedman from the Cato Institute.